Welcome to the Daily Race. Uh, I'm thrilled you're here today. I'm thrilled. It is a Monday morning. We are kicking off this week. Uh, I'm sure if you're, you're getting out of bed, maybe a little tired today, or uh, you're excited for the week, regardless of what your situation is, whether it's <laughs> you're jumping out of bed or crawling out of bed, um, you made it. <laughs> you made it. And we are taking an intentional step with God today. We're in the book of Revelation, and today we're in Revelation chapter 12. And yesterday we kind of wrapped up a, a series of, um, of statements, the, the final of the seven trumpets. So once again, there's uh, the retelling of the story. There's seven seals uh, that told the story of how the world is going to, to come to its conclusion, how God's going to reign forever. Then we went through the seven trumpets that retold that story. Uh, not a conflicting story, but with different details, different emphasis added in here and there. And, and now we're in a, uh, a series of, of a couple visions that John receives uh, that, that aren't related. Well, they're all related. It's all the story of Jesus. It's all about his plan of redemption. Uh, but these have already taken place. So we're going back in time here. Remember we said that Revelation jumps around a bit. If we try to interpret it as a story, one story from the beginning to the end, that's where we get in trouble. That's where we're having to do all these crazy uh, gymnastics to make things fit and to create a coherent storyline when that's just not what it is. The world's already ended twice. How many times is, is the world going to come to its conclusion with God reigning forever? Once. It's going to happen once. So, once again, not conflict, it's retelling the story. So, here we're in Revelation chapter 12. Let me read what takes place here. It says, Then I witnessed in heaven an event of great significance. I saw a woman clothed with the sun and the moon beneath her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant, and she cried out because of her labor planes in the agony of giving birth. Then, I witnessed in heaven another significant event. I saw a large red dragon with seven heads and ten horns with seven crowns on his head. His tail swept away one-third of the stars in the sky, and he threw them to the earth. He stood in front of the woman as though she was, as she was about to give birth, ready to devour her baby as soon as it was born. She gave birth to a son who was to rule all nations with an iron rod. And her child was snatched away from the dragon, was caught up to God and his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where God had prepared a place to care for her 1,260 days. All right, let's pause right there. Crazy scene. What is this? This is actually the birth of Jesus. Wait a second, where would you get that from? All right, so the reason why we know it's the birth of Jesus, who is this person who was born? born. She gave birth to a son who is to rule all nations with an iron rod. So this child, this idea of an iron rod goes back to Psalm chapter 2. And this is the Messiah. The Messiah is being born here. Who is this woman? This woman represents Israel. It says, I saw a woman clothed in the sun and the moon beneath her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. So remember Joseph's dreams about the sun and the moon, uh, his parents uh, bowing down to him and the 12 stars representing his 12 brothers, the 12 tribes of Israel. This woman represents Israel. And what was God's promise? That the Savior, the Messiah, will be born through Israel. So what we're seeing here is a pulling back of the curtain of the spiritual battle that's going on at the birth of Jesus. In fact, more specific to this, Satan's final defeat, or his, well, not his final defeat, but his real defeat. When was Satan defeated? When the Messiah was born, when Jesus came. Jesus' victory on the cross, his resurrection from the dead, that was the defeat of Satan. Yes, Satan's still around. We're gonna, we've been reading about what he's going to do after that, but he's already a defeated villain. He's already a defeated entity. Um, he's thrashing. He is trying to cause as much pain and damage and evil as he can before his final judgment. But the, the battle's over. So what we're seeing here is that the curtains just pull back on this spiritual battle that's going on. So think about this. Next time you set up your nativity scene at Christmas. I was hearing a pastor give this analogy the other day. Uh, that, you know, you've got the nativity scene there. You've got Mary. You've got Joseph. You've got the birth of baby Jesus. You've got shepherds, maybe some wise men. Somewhere, maybe behind, a little bit further away, you should have this giant red dragon <laughs> representing the spiritual one. Why? Because there was a spiritual battle going on as well. Satan did not want the Messiah to come. Satan was, was against this taking place. God has an enemy. It's Satan. And he even goes on to here. It says, His tail swept away 
a third of the stars of the sky, a third of heaven, when Satan rebelled, took them with him, a third of, of the angelic spiritual beings. So Satan has an army. We've been hearing about that in the previous passages. So it's given us this snapshot of this thing that took place in the past. And then it goes on, it says, Then there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. And the, dra and the dragon lost the battle, and he and his angels were forced out of heaven. This great dragon, the ancient serpent, called the devil, or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. And then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens, It has come at last salvation and power to the kingdom of our God, the authority of and the authority of his Christ, the Messiah. For the accuser uh, of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. They have been defeated. How have they been defeated? Out on the battlefield? No, by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. They did not love their lives, so, and they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens, and you will live and you who live in the heavens rejoice, but terror will come on the earth and the sea, and the devil has come down to you in great anger, knowing that he has little time. So when was Satan defeated? Like I said, at the cross. They're celebrating this great victory. There's this spiritual battle going on the whole time uh, behind the scenes of Satan and the heavenly realm. But the defeat comes with Jesus and the cross, and he's cast out uh, a way that the battle's over, he's lost, but doesn't mean that he's not going to inflict damage. And it says, When the dragon realized he'd been thrown down to earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child, but she was given two wings like those of a great eagle, so she could fly to the place prepared for in the wilderness. There she'd be cared for and protected from the dragon for a time, times, and, time, and a half a time. Then the dragon tried to drown the woman with a flood of water that flowed from his mouth, but the earth helped her by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that gushed from her mouth and the dragon. And the dragon was angry at the woman and declared war against the children of her, against the rest of her children and all who keep God's commands and maintain their testimony for Jesus. Then the dragon took his stand on the shore before the sea. All right, so uh, Satan comes is cast down out of heaven. Uh, in this epic battle, the spiritual realm is taking place, and then he wreaks havoc on mankind, specifically chasing after this woman. And who's this woman represent? We already said Israel. So, battling against the Israelites, battling, battling against God's chosen people. Um, but post cross, the church takes up that mantle as God's chosen people. So this battle is going on. A spiritual battle continues between Satan and the church. This spiritual battle taking place. So. Once again, we read a passage like this, and if we're thinking sequential, we're like, okay, because this is, you know, towards the middle of Revelation, you know, this is in the middle of the story, this is, but it's actually retelling something that's actually taken place. The birth of Jesus, his death on the cross, the victory, it gives us a snapshot of Satan being cast out of heaven, taking a third of the angels with him, and this battle that continues, Satan continuing to pursue and thwart God's plan, persecuting the church, yet... There are these miraculous things that happen behind the scenes. God's provision for them, uh, helping preserve them, keep them, and fight that battle as well. The point here is that there is a spiritual battle going on around us all the time. That, that God is at work, that Satan is trying to confuse and deceive and derail and get people off of God's plan. But ultimately, we know the victory has already been won. These are the, the, the death throes. Uh, these are the, the final acts of, of rebellious Satan. He, he knows he's lost, so he's trying to deceive as many as possible so they can't inherit eternal life and experience all, the victory for all time with Christ and his followers. So we stand in victory today because of what Jesus did. That battle between good and evil was not won by Satan at the birth and death and resurrection of Jesus. That's already been decided. We live in light of that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we are just so so grateful for your, your mercy for us, your love for us. God, that this battle that, that took place um, was even a fair fight. God, you are sovereign. You are holy. There is no way that, that Satan and his, although he has, has power and ability, can stand up to you. So God, we 
we once again, every single day, choose you. Choose to follow you and choose to trust in you. Uh, choose to look forward to the victory that we have, but also recognize that, that there are, are, there's a spiritual battle taking on right around us. That Satan wants to, to work against the, the, the work that you're doing. It wants to confuse us, wants to get us on the sidelines. So God, protect us. God, help us to be wise in the decisions we make. God, help us to follow your Holy Spirit's leading. We thank you so much that we do not fight this battle alone, but you fight it for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.